delve into tamarisk a little bit. Um, it's a native to Eurasia, and it was first introduced in the United States as an ornamental plant in the 1800s. And it was later used um, as an erosion control measure along many streams and rivers in the West. It uses about the same water as other phreatophytes, such as willows and cottonwoods. But when you move into upland situations where tamarisk has replaced xeric species such as sagebrush or rabbitbrush, that's when you're really going to see water savings potentially um, once you remove tamarisk from the system. Okay. I'm going to focus on the floral and faunal changes, um, but just keep in mind that they can also have an effect on stream bank um, structure, river access, shade avail availability, and also affect fire regimes. And so there's a lot of questions out there about what these beetles are really doing. Not frequency, but intensity and or severity is um, often increased in these tamarisk stands. And it's not that it's necessarily more flammable, although it does contain some volatile, volatile oils. Um, it just has a branching structure that allows fire to move up into the crown. And it also has a high density of um, dead woody material within a live plant, which makes it more susceptible to fire. As mentioned earlier, it does survive well in areas that aren't frequently inundated by flooding, so there's a lot of ground litter and debris that allows fire to carry rabbit. You know, when you try to get to a stream where it's bordered by a lot of tamarisk, it's, it's difficult to even see the river in a lot of locations. What we call poodle puff in the tamarisk coalition, and it just shows some of the response of the tamarisk when it's stressed and it takes what carbohydrate reserves it has and tries to get some leaves going so it can get some photosynthesis going. So here's the star of the show. It's the tamarisk leaf beetle, also called diarabda. This life form that actually does the most damage on the tamarisk plants, and it does this by eating the leaves of the tamarisk. Two years after the release, and you can see that the tamarisk are quite browned out. Um, it should be noted that the beetles don't kill the tamarisk within um, the first season. It may take quite a few years before the tamarisk are um, really dead. And that's not to say you're not going to see um, ecological changes. Um, they just might not be completely dead. But you can already see that the tamarisk are completely stressed. By 2009, the beetles had spread quite a bit. You can see there's Escalani. Um, they'd also made it down to the St. George area, um, whether by natural or human-aided causes, sometimes it's not always. The beetles, the large dots indicate a large establishment of the beetles. So you can really see a little better where they are in the canyon. A lot of the native communities are bouncing back um, when the tamarisk is dying back. But how we really want these river systems to look as the tamarisk dies out.